evidence from placebo treatments in randomized controlled trials. So this is looking at mostly drug trials. A primary source of evidence for nocebos come from, comes from pooled data on individuals randomized to the placebo arms of pharmaceutical trials. The development of adverse responses to placebos in clinical trials is believed to be psychosocially and contextually mediated through nocebo effects, as inert drugs themselves do not exert direct biological actions. So I give someone a pill that doesn't contain anything and they experience negative outcomes. Often the listed side effects of what the drug is actually for. And they're not getting the drug, they're getting the placebo, but they're still experiencing the negative side effects from it. Adverse responses to placebos are common, occurring in approximately one quarter of subjects. So the power of suggestion is tremendous, one quarter of subjects. Converging evidence suggests that nocebos may even account for a majority of the side effects reported in clinical trials. The side effects coming from the group that's getting the placebo more so than the group that's getting the actual drug themselves. Um, expectations for anticipation also play a role as adverse responses to placebos and clinical trials often mirror those associated with the active drug. So example um, they have here, among uh, depressive patients, dry mouth and drowsiness are more common with placebo tricyclic antidepressants than with uh, placebo selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Among people with migraines, um, anorexia and memory complaints are more common uh, in the placebo trials than versus other drug classes. So the side effects listed for the drug, if you're going into a drug trial, they say you might get the placebo, you might get the actual drug. We don't know because we're blinded to it. Potential side effects include dry mouth uh, and drowsiness. Well, even the people getting the placebo start to experience dry mouth and drowsiness. Right? So just the thought that it could happen creates those symptoms subjectively in the patient. Sham acupuncture is more likely to cause pain, redness, and swelling. No needle is going into the skin, yet one of the side effects of acupuncture could be pain, redness, and swelling. And so even the people getting the sham start to experience pain, redness, and swelling. Your mind is crazy, crazy powerful. Evidence from nocebo RCTs comparing two types of information about side effects. So this kind of separates it. Certain people are given information about the side effects, certain people are not. Let's see how that plays out. A handful of studies have also assessed whether medication related information provided directly to individuals could impact the frequency of side effect reporting. In a multi-center study evaluating aspirin or another drug that I cannot pronounce for unstable angina. The possibility of gastrointestinal side effects was mentioned in the consent forms at some clinical sites, but not others. Correspondingly, withdrawal rates due to gastrointestinal side effects were six times greater among individuals warned about these side effects in advance. Right? The presentation of information and the thought that it could happen leads to the negative repercussions, the negative consequences. In another large analysis of statins, subjects participated in one of two clinical phases, a placebo-controlled placebo double-blinded randomized phase versus a non-blinded, non-randomized open-label phase. Rates of a, uh, statin-associated muscle symptoms were equivalent between those receiving statins and placebos in the blinded uh, randomized portion of the study, but when they were unblinded, when the person knew they were getting the placebo, it dropped. The statin users still got the high portion of side effects, but the people getting the pl placebo did not get those side effects. If they didn't know what drug they were getting, both groups equally suffered the same amount of side effects, even though this group wasn't even getting the drug. Okay. Uh, another one talking about uh, cardiovascular disease and a certain drug for that which can cause erectile dysfunction. In men, uh, newly diagnosed with cardiovascular disease were randomized to start atenolol under three different conditions. Group A was not informed of the drug's name. Group B was informed of the drug's name. Group C was told of the drug's name and potential sexual side effects. Three months later, the incidence of erectile dysfunction was 3.1% in group A, 15.6% in group B, and 31.2% in group C. 
being told and being able to do your own research and go on Google and start searching and also being told the potential side effect of erectile dysfunction is significantly more likely to actually lead to erectile dysfunction. Okay, so you can see the power of suggestion throughout all of these different scenarios. Verbal suggestion. Direct verbal suggestion is among the most straightforward means for generating a nocebo effect. Studies have demonstrated, for example, that giving asthmatics nebulized, so meaning uh, air into their system, nebulized saline labeled as an irritant can worsen respiratory function and precipitate bronchoconstrictive attacks. And that injecting saline labeled as an allergen to into patients with food allergies can cause allergic symptoms. Even though it's just saline, if it's labeled as potentially an allergen and you give it to somebody with a lot of allergies, they will experience allergic reaction. Right? So let's that's just it's just that's how powerful your mind is. Furthermore, among laboratory studies involving healthy subjects, headaches have been induced by simulating passage of an electrical current. So if they tell you that there's an electrical current going through your brain, like they say, we're gonna hook up these electrodes and we're gonna pass an electrical current through your brain, and they'll tell you that it might cause headaches, okay? Um, do, do, do. Furthermore, among laboratory studies involving healthy subjects, headaches have been induced by simulating the passage of an electrical current through one's head along with the false message of its headache promoting effects. Uh, symptoms of headache, nauseousness, itchy skin, and drowsiness have been uh, elicited following exposure to an inert substance paired with advance warning of these specific symptoms. If we think that concussions will cause long-term headaches and that's precipitated throughout the media and everybody else, guess what? The patient is more likely to experience long-term headaches, right? Negative verbal suggestion can even negate the effectiveness of valid treatments. Administering nitrous oxide or topical analgesia, along with the false message that these interventions worsen rather than alleviate pain, actually results in increased pain. You're giving somebody painkillers and telling them that they'll actually worsen their pain, and guess what? Even though they've taken a painkiller, their pain gets worse. A similar pattern of worsened rather than improved muscle tension has been observed when pairing negative information with a commonly used muscle relaxant.